Today we're going to check out something that's both a system and a game at the same time with cloaks, courts, and guns. Hello everyone and thank you all for joining us again here today on Hessen County for another TTRPG Talk. This video series takes a look at tabletop role-playing games and related materials, makes suggestions for your own games, and takes a look at some of my own materials, world-building options, and various other things like that. Today though we're going to be doing a, a weird sort of hybrid between our TTRPG Talks and our SRD Talks because we're going to be taking a look at a game that also introduces a, is or essentially is the prototype of a uh, TTRPG system, and that is Cloaks, Courts, and Guns, Espionage in the Thirty Years' War. So to sort of explain the basics of the game before we jump into the system, uh, this game uh, is a pretty short uh, one, a short and simple game that explores role-playing, courtly intrigue, and conflict in the 1600s. So just to put this into context, this of course is the period of the Thirty Years' War uh, in Europe, the Dutch Golden Age, the French Great Century with all the Lu with all the really rich and famous Louis, uh, the English Civil War, and the rising of the gunpowder empires of the Ottoman Safavids and Mughals in, uh, you know, in, in Central and South Asia. Um, and this game in particular was created by Ben Dutter of Sigilstone Publishing. This was in 2015. Um, and just to, and so yeah, this is the the basics of this game are going to be pretty similar to anyone who's played something along the lines of you know uh, the Drake's uh, Court of Blades. If you've played this one, or um, there are several other games that are set in this time period. Most of them do admittedly focus on. Uh, not necessarily on court courtly intrigue and, and politics, but rather instead more on like pirates and stuff, which of course would be the same time period. Um, but you know, like Seven Seas or something like that. But still, this is this is definitely more set in courtly intrigue. Uh, and although this game this game in particular is themed more towards like uh, a European style, uh, like in the Court of Blades that I mentioned previously. Um, it, you could also adapt this, uh, either the system or the the game itself, with some modifications for taking place pretty much anywhere in the world. Now, why is this an SRD video uh, more ra rather than more, uh, you know, a tr more traditional sort of game introduction? And that is, of course, because I mentioned earlier, a uh, cloak. Cloaks, Courts, and Guns is an archetype for Dutter's 10-tier system. And in fact, this is actually the only place where I have technically seen this system existing. Vow of Honor does, uh, which also is by uh, Ben Dutter, does share some similarities, but there are also some distinct differences. Now, one thing that is important to note is that this game is copyrighted. So the system itself really should be for inspiration. In all logistical honesty, create a game that is based on this system per se as exactly as described here but you can certainly take strong inspiration uh and of course mechanics can't be copyrighted um so that's another thing to think about uh, um, you would still want to to say hey this system is heavily inspired by this this game and this system by ben dutter so now let's kind of dive into how 10 tiers kind of works as you can probably imagine from the name 10 tiers, uh, it uses pools of 10 sided dice for any tasks, which are just, you know, actions that require a roll. Uh, and the maximum number of dice you can have in your pool is 10. Each uh, die that when you roll is equal to or under a target number is considered a success. So again, that's pretty standard. Uh, the difficulty for an action sets the number of successes so the gm would decide or game or dungeon master game master who had a facilitator uh, would basically set a difficulty for your task which is the number of successes that you need uh now normally this is below five anything above five would be something really incredibly difficult uh, but it can range anywhere between one and ten uh complex tasks also have a durability um that basically acts like a clock or a, a tick a track uh, that is reduced by your task's effect. Um, and the effect for your task is decided by whichever uh, successful die was rolled the highest during a successful task. So if my target number for successes was five and I rolled 
one of my dice was a four, then my effect would be four. And that durability is usually somewhere between one and 15 and therefore would get deducted. So that's for, again, complex tasks that would take multiple actions, potentially doing different things in different places to, to try to accomplish a singular goal. Whenever we are taking a look at uh, characters in this sort of 10 tiers system, um, we're basically going to be looking at skills and specialities. Uh, skills measure the weight of your character, how many d10 that you can roll. Uh, this can be between three, four, or five. Um, and uh, basically whether it's three, four, or five is decided by the player. Um, and there, again, as I mentioned, six skills uh, in the uh, cloaks, courts, and guns. This is set at influence, insight, melee, so physical combat, mental, uh, physical, and ranged. Um, each of these skills likewise have five specialities inside of them. And everybody has a level of speciality uh, that can range anywhere from two to six. And this is actually where your success target number comes from. Um, so just as an example, taking a look at the influence skill, the five specialities that are inside of influence, again, in the uh, cloaks, courts, and guns game are charm, convince, inspire, intimidate and lie uh, so you can see obviously influence is entirely a uh, set f aside for social skills where you are attempting to influence another person hence influence now one caveat that uh, ben dutter does add at this stage would be that whenever you are whenever you are creating your character's pool and that pool is more than double the difficulty of the task you're attempting to accomplish this really should be considered an auto success. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. So again, if my pool's already six and this is like a difficulty to task, then I really shouldn't be rolling. Uh, the odds of my success are more than high enough that really we shouldn't be worried about it. Uh, however, there are other things that can also add dice or add successes to your roll or could add... Um, to, to other to other elements and these uh, could could include various modifiers in the scene. These could add up to five dice to your pool or they uh, uh, certain items, for example, could increase the effect of your action. So for example, if I am wielding a highly cra uh, a well crafted weapon in my attempt at doing something, then um, it might not necessarily increase my chances of success, but it would increase, let's say, the effect of my action, which in this case is essentially damage, uh, because another use for uh, for effect and uh, dura that that effect and durability is is in combat where we're inflicting damage on another person or another character. Um, your characters can also have several, one or more forms. Uh, these forms add a plus one auto success uh, uh, to uh, any three associated specialities. In addition to that, your character also has a talent uh, when you're creating your character. Uh, and whenever your character's talent could potentially apply, you get a, a plus one to your dice. So uh, an example of a talent that the char that is described in the manual uh, would be something along the lines of like you're an academic or you're a crowned prince. So like so for example, when I'm attempting to influence somebody and the fact that I am a prince could be influential, all right? Uh, then presumably I would gain an extra die uh, when utilizing that talent. Um, an example of a form, again, from the uh, manual uh, is accomplished hunter. So for that, for that form, um, Ben Dutter picked a perception medium, which is one of the... Uh, ranged weapons uh, traits or uh, specialities um, and stealth. So, so in in the example they they uh, Ben Dutter gives uh, whenever this particular character is then attacking with a medium medium bow, therefore they would gain an automatic success on their ranged roll. So that's just uh, an example of that utilizing that. 
So just to give you another example of a task basically from beginning to end, uh, let's say, uh, again, the, again, this is palace intrigue. So my character is wanting to sneak into a secure part of the palace, maybe, uh, you know, the apartments of a political rival. Um, my character has a mental skill of four. Uh, D, 4D and a stealth specialization of 4. So this means that uh, base I would roll 4 dice and I would need to roll a 4 or under to get at least one success. Uh, they also have the talent infiltrator. Uh, so let's say this, this character is, specializes in spy craft and skullduggery. Um, and so you know, the GM might decide, okay, yeah, this applies uh, to this particular thing because, again, I'm trying to sneak. I'm literally infiltrating uh, the apartments of this person, so they would give me a, a bonus die. So now my pool is five dice. Um, the GM decides that this is a, a, a difficulty to task um, primarily because, um, you know, maybe it's nighttime and the guards aren't really necessarily expecting anybody to be there, so they're not like on high alert or something. Um, and it, this isn't this isn't like the king's palace. There aren't like tons of guards around. There's just like your standard guards probably patrolling the patrolling the grounds or or the hallways of the palace and stuff like that. So, so I, again, I roll five dice. Uh, so when I roll my five dice, I get a a nine, a, a seven, a three, a two, and a two. So because, again, my stealth specialization was four, that means I needed to roll a four or under to get at least one success. Uh, so with a three, two, and a two, that gives me three successes. Uh, in addition to that, if this were a task that required me to keep track of the effect of the task, so for example, if I was attempting to uh, potentially harm a character, or if this was uh, like a... a I, if if I was attempting, let's say if this if the GM decided to make this a multi stage sort of sneak into something, um, then presumably that would give me three effects to apply to whatever the durability of this task would be, because three is the highest value of the dice that I rolled that still counts as a success. Advancing a character in ten tier. Uh, basically, uh, Ben Dutter doesn't really have XP or anything like that. Instead, you, it, this is really sort of achievement or mission-based uh, advancement. Um, so whenever you would hit that particular point, then your character or your player would pick uh, one of the following for their character. So you could either add a uh, plus one D, or so add a die to a pool uh, for two of your skills. Um, improve, so this would be adding an extra die, or uh, adding a new talent. Um, improve, so this is adding plus one, or add a specialty to a form. Or I could uh, add plus one rank to all of the specialities underneath a certain skill. So if I wanted to improve my chances of success at using, again, mental, uh, mental tasks, so I could add plus one to all of the specialities, meaning then I, instead of having a six, a five, a four, and a three, and a two, I would have a seven, six, five, four, and three. Now, uh, several things that uh, to, to note here for when it comes to advancement is that no skill can be higher than D10 because, again, the, the highest number of dice you can have in a pool is 10. Uh, no speciality rank can be higher than 9 because, again, there needs to be some chance of failure. Um, and no form speciality can be approved, improved above a plus 3. Now, when would you potentially use a 10-tier-like system? Um, assuming you want to create your own game using something like this. Uh, well, I mean, this this system, when I when I was reading it, the system reminded me actually quite strongly of like a, like uh, the roll keep system that AEG used for a number of its games, including the famous uh, Legends of the Five Rings uh, system, like bef prior to... The fifth edition. So you could potentially use this as uh, something whenever you might want to potentially use a roll keep system as as a replacement. Because uh, again, uh, one complication of using a type type of roll keep system again, you have an ability score that sets the number of dice you roll and a skill that determines how many dice you keep. But then you have to 
add them together and compare that to a difficulty number or target number. Um, and that uh, adds a lot of math um, that can slow things down uh, and stuff like that. So this to me feels a bit more streamlined, but still has a similar feel um, when it comes to uh, weighing your uh, methods versus skills or your, uh, in this case, again, skills versus specializations or, you know, again, in the course of Legend of the Five Rings, ability scores versus uh, skills. In this system, you definitely could use a playbook or a class. That is certainly a way that you could potentially help your players create a particular types of characters, especially if you're creating a game where you want your characters to kind of fill certain niches, and those could tie to the talent or the form already exists in the system. But this obviously, this is not, certainly not required because, again, you already have the talent and the form that both provide bonuses for having a certain description for your character. And again, those are usually one to two words um, and stuff. Um, and uh, another way I could see how playing this is you could really play it two different ways. You could have a game where you have really broad skills. Quotes, courts, and guns skills are, I mean, like there is a melee and a ranged uh and so you know you could condense those into one in order to decrease the number of skills you need to keep track of or to add an extra um an extra skill focused on something else um or you could have incredibly focused uh sets of skills and specializations uh for you know again your varied scope of play uh where you can have a game where all of your characters are really focused on this one thing like combat or I don't know. Let's say you want to make a wrestling game. <laughs> you know, you should make sure that your skills and specializations are really focused on the kinds of things that you would need to have in, you know, showmanship or actual physical skills or stuff like that. And again, you could cut down on the number of skills that you keep track of. So instead of having six, maybe you only have three skills. Um, where one's three and one's a four and one's a five. and But you still have... And you could also potentially cut down at least a little bit on specializations. Um, so maybe each one has only four specializations. So yeah, those are some different ways that you could potentially play this. So um, it's to go a bit further into Cloaks, Courts, and Guns as a game, uh, we obviously have not touched on everything in it. Uh, there is, again, it's it's very, very brief if you, if you download or get the version that does not have art in it. Like the actual game itself only takes up really eight and a half nine pages um if you don't include the character sheet that goes with it which honestly the character sheet itself is unnecessarily detailed and large like you could probably get away with only half of the character sheet um but yeah it also includes some extra materials uh where you know to help you generate missions examples for different factions and and stuff and again weapons that potentially could add um some information when it comes to like the effect that uh you know the effect that a pole axe might have or the uh bonuses that you might get for wielding uh an artist or using an artisan's kilt or a kit or a wearing a cloak that adding to stealth um and and stuff like that so the, it's, you know there's a list of equipment um provides a little bit of basic information when it comes to reminding you of defeat is not necessarily permanent you know what should happen to your character when they uh fail pretty significantly uh weapon uh keeping track uh it's making suggestions on keeping tracks of relationships but not actually giving you a system to do it with um and and some other things like that so yeah that was uh cloaks courts and guns uh Espionage in the Forty Years' War. Again, this was by Ben Dutter of the um, Sigil Stone Publishing. This came out in 2015. And the uh, 10 tier system that it prototypes. So, uh, thank you all again for joining, for joining us again here today on Hessens County. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this uh, video and would like to see lots more like it, where we explore various systems, role playing games, create games, do all kinds of stuff related to. Uh, TTRPGs. Uh, don't forget to rate your itch purchases or drive through RPG purchases wherever you may get your uh, role-playing games online. And have a good zone.